Okay, uh, Gregory, we are now live. Uh, you okay. go ahead, Gregory or Greg? Uh, Greg. Okay, awesome. Um, so do I, so even better. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, um, uh, Greg, do you want to just quickly introduce yourself and then um, introduce the topic? Would that be okay? Sure, yeah. Uh, my name's Greg Ferris. I actually live in Menlo Park, but I, um, I'm often in Palo Alto, actually. We're very close to the border. And I've been bicycling around Palo Alto Mental Park for 42 years, and I'm pretty familiar with, you know, the hazards of, of riding a bicycle, uh, which are not insignificant. Um, but uh, the reason I'd reached out was um, I started riding a route that took me across uh, El Camino at Sand Hill Road. Mm -hmm. And within one week, I almost got hit twice. Um, and uh, I, I think it's a very dangerous situation. And uh, um it it needs attention and i'd be i'd be happy to share share my screen i can show you um yeah could you please the intersection that, that would be awesome yeah is this showing up yeah so uh here's uh el camino train tracks are here stanford shopping center is here and so uh when these two uh, episodes occurred, I was crossing this crosswalk here on my bicycle. And um, uh, right here, it's it's eight lanes across. So it's a, a fair bit of, of um, pavement to cross. But what's happening here is that there's this right right hand turn lane here. Uh, and this was at, um, at the end of the day, maybe around 6 p.m. both in both occasions. Uh, the cars are coming down this right uh, right hand turn lane and uh, they're just rolling right through right through the intersection to make the turn. And I know this very well. I mean, being on a bicycle for a long time, cars aren't looking for bicycles. They aren't looking for pedestrians. They're primarily just looking for cars. And a lot of people are looking at their phones. A lot of people are, are looking for traffic with their peripheral vision. And with peripheral vision, you can see cars, but you can't see pedestrians and you can't see bicycles. Um, at any rate, um, I don't, it, it's possible that people have gotten seriously hurt here already in this zone. And part of what makes it dangerous for the pedestrians and the bicycles, well, you've got a long way to go, but um, there's usually, a, I mean, when it's a red light, you've got a row of cars here and it's hard to see these cars coming to make that turn. So it's hard for them to see pedestrians and it's hard for the pedestrians to see them and further um, a lot of cars they have a, a pillar between the windshield and the, the driver's window and that that further blocks their vision so um, it's very dangerous and uh, if people haven't already gotten hurt people are going to get hurt and uh, the fact that um, I was almost hit twice in a week is telling me that's a big problem um, you know if you go into statistics, you could say, well, it's not impossible that it would be a very rare event that would happen in one week. But um, I've, I, I'm very concerned about what's going on. And I see why it's happening because the cars come down here in the right-hand turn lane. They know that all, a lot of these other cars are not a risk for them and they just roll right through. Anyway, um, I wanted to bring that to your attention. Um, I, Actually, so, so Greg, can you um, can you draw on the screen or can you zoom in a little bit more? It's a little bit small, but can you draw in um, where you were and where the car was? Exactly? Uh, let's see. That's where I... you could you could draw on the screen. Yeah, let me see. Uh, what was the car here? Spotlight? I don't know. The car was right here. Okay. And I was right here. Okay. Okay, and, and and light was red, and the car and the car is just here. Oh, yeah, <laughs> things talking to me. Okay, um, so okay, and so yeah, so on the left hand corner of, of the of the pillar, probably the um, you were blocked, like they couldn't quite see you. Could be. Um, I mean, so yeah, a lot of people are 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 pushing the rules, so they should stop. Yeah. And then once they're stopped, they should look. And then after they've stopped and they've looked, they can go. Yeah. 
But what yeah. they're doing is they're rolling, maybe looking a little bit, maybe not seen, but they're not stopping. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think they think that they're doing fine, but they're not thinking about pedestrians. They're not thinking about the pillar that blocks their visibility. Mm. And uh, sometime, if people haven't already gotten hit, they're going to get hit. And I think it's and and it may be compounded. It seems like drivers have gotten worse during the pandemic and you know i don't know a lot of people looking into that but um it's a big hazard so um what do you think we should do to solve this well um so one thing i mean so there's kind of assessments and then there's actions so and and i you know i I'm not a traffic person but um it seems to me that in terms of assessment, one thing is one could look at, I don't know, I don't know in terms of traffic incidents, if it's easy to narrow down and see, have there been incidents reported here? Um, and I have no idea how, you know, what, what that database is like. And so that's one thing. Another thing is, and I don't think that, that the city wants to take an action just based on one person who said they almost got hit twice and maybe they, or maybe they will. I mean, it's clear to me, it's clearly a, a big problem, but another option would be uh, in terms of assessment would be to put a camera and, and just look. And, and, and I've thought about just taking my camera out and doing it myself. Um, and you know, if, if, if there's no other way, I, maybe I would do that, just go out there and film for a while. Um, so I think that either one of those things, either, um, you know, looking at traffic incidents or, um, you know, recording, uh, what's happening in the intersection will confirm what I'm saying, that there's a problem in it. And other people have told me the same thing about people rolling through that light. And it's no surprise. I mean, people are doing that all over the County, all over the Bay area, all over the country, rolling through red lights, making a right-hand turn in terms of, um, actions to make it safer um one possibility would be to, i i don't know how much this would help but to actually put the um have the cars stop further back from the um uh from the crosswalk because the stop line is here when a pedestrian or a cyclist is coming across there's kind of a wall of cars and depending on what they are i mean if they're trucks or or suvs or minivans you can't see uh here and if that line was pushed back, um, and I don't see any why there would be any risk. And in fact, you look at this left-hand turn lane, that's way back here. So, I mean, pushing that back would give the drivers more visibility before they enter the crosswalk and give the pedestrians more visibility before the cars are right on them. And the other thing, um, you know, is a, um, I don't, I, I, I'm not uh, knowledgeable about the, politics of traffic cameras in Palo Alto, but I would recommend putting in a traffic camera uh, and, and, and instituting some fines because I think that really will change the behavior because what happens is that people come up to the intersection, the car in front of them rolls through, yeah. they start rolling through. And, and if, if you start turning it, I mean, the more people who are rolling through, the more people will roll through. Roll through. And if a couple of people get uh, tickets and they stop and they don't roll through, then I think the rest of the traffic will, it'll, it'll, I think the impact of tickets go beyond the person who's received the ticket. But so just out of curiosity, what, what is, what is the uh, Palo Alto stance on, on traffic cameras? We, we don't have any in our city. Um, although I know that Menlo Park does. And um, in fact, I, I heard that one of the number one a uh, ticket you get from the red light cameras is actually right a right turn on red. That's actually the most popular <laughs> of uh, all the tickets. It's very rarely you're in a center lane, you just go right through. But uh -huh. very, very common for cars to uh, not stop when making a right uh, like they're supposed to. Um, yeah, and, and now that I think about it, there's I, I haven't had the issue here because I don't travel this intersection a whole lot. But I remember, um, I, actually, I was in Mellon Park. I was, I was biking in Mellow Park and um, I think I was on Willow. And uh, when I was biking on Willow, um, I forgot the cross street, but it was it was past El Camino. Um, I forgot which street it was. And this car didn't, like I was, um, I was, um, uh, I think, was it red light or I was trying to think? No, I think, I think it was, I think it was a green light. 
right? Uh, or from red to green. And I was about to go because it just turned, but the car, the, the car uh, that was on the left of me was making a right hand turn and it almost hit me, right? And I was like, oh my God, you know, I was, I was, I was kind of, some of my life flashed before that one. Eyes there, right? I, I yeah. know that one exactly. I've been hit four times wow. by cars traveling parallel to me. Well, maybe I'll use my hands. I'm going this way. The car's yeah. going this way. Yeah. They pass me. They slow down and they turn. Yeah. I've been struck four times. And uh, I, I'm embarrassed to say it took me four times to learn. But uh, you can always tell when the cars get, and I don't think any of them had a had their turn. That none of them had their turn. Yeah, signal. exactly. That's the thing about they don't turn their turn. They don't put, the, don't put it on right because, because they're in the they're all the way over in the right and they and they're making right hand. They don't they don't see the point. But yeah. They always slow down just slightly before they turn. So yeah. if the car is in that position where they yeah. could hit me, and if they slow down even the slightest bit, I'll slow down. Um, but because I've been hit four times, yeah, by that, well, by exactly that, and actually almost hit a couple other times. Um, well, there, there's a um, middle schooler a couple of years ago who got hit and died on El Camino and California. Um, so a truck, uh, I'm not sure the exact setup, but basically a truck was making a right and wow. basically killed the kid. Um, wow. So, yeah, so yeah. Our right hand turns definitely are problematic, right? And I've, I've experienced mm -hmm. myself. Um, in, in, your, in your case, it's a little bit different where you're crossing the street. And uh, I think, um, I think, uh, yeah, I think they're just, so red, red light cameras is a possible solution. I know that they're very controversial because some people feel they do give a lot of tickets out. They give a lot of tickets out, um, but um, but they can be very effective in terms of preventing tragedies, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and and there can be different reasons for having them, but I mean, you could have them to raise revenue. Or you could have them to change behavior. Yeah. And I mean, there's always going to people be people who say, "Well, you just have it to raise revenue." But I mean, if the cars. So, I mean, this particular intersection, I think is quite dangerous. And, and maybe the first step is to do some kind of assessment. Um, yeah. Because if cars are rolling through there routinely, then you have to do something. So you could put it, put an officer out, out there. Yeah, that's um, crazy you, expensive, right, to do. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I, I think if, if, if I'm correct and they're just rolling through, like, all the time, something should be done. So, I mean, yeah. is it possible to put a camera out to... Um, to monitor and see, you know, yeah, they, they have, yeah, they have, these they... they're actually quite nice. They're, um, they use like temporary monitoring. They have like this little extension pole. So you, 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 they chain it to the, to a pole and then they, so we, we do that all the time actually. Okay. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I think, I think we kind of know the issue. The question is how do we solve it? Right. Okay. Um, and it's, it's not just this intersection, but it's, you know, one, one thing I've been really looking to, um, quite a bit is, protected bike lanes. Now it wouldn't necessarily solve this problem, but I'm just trying to think of, of um, you know, um, you know, one of the big reasons we did a survey, we, we asked why, you know, cause like in our area, like Menlo Park, Palo Alto, it's like ideal biking weather, right? It's, it's mm -hmm. rarely rains. It's not too hot. There's no hills, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty, it's, it's, it's pretty ideal, right? Yeah. So, um, and, and, and we're trying to figure out like, why don't more people want to bike, right? The school kids bike, but a lot of adults don't bike. And one of the bigger reasons why is because um, people don't feel safe, right? Because people will get hit, you know, I think, and that's, I mean, that was the overwhelming reason why people didn't want to bike was because of, of they didn't feel safe. Yeah. And, um, and so like, uh, and, and then if we look at our city, our, our, our city has a goal of trying to get, um, you know, trying to be very eco-friendly. And, you know, the vast majority of our greenhouse gas actually is from cars, right? And, and, and you know, you can try to get people to car pull, but fundamentally, the thing that you have to do is you have to get people out of the cars, right? You have, you, you either need more public transit, which is hard in a low density area like this, or you need to get people out on bikes, right? But the problem is people want a bike, they don't feel safe, right? right. So, and, and, you know, whenever it's a bike versus a two-ton car, the car wins every single time, right? So, um, yeah, so I've been thinking about how do, how do we make people feel safe? So protected bike lane is certainly one way because um, there's some sort of barrier between the biker and the car and, and that helps a lot. But still these intersections are tough, right? And you know, one thing, I, one thing I've seen in, um, 
so I used to have an office in Shenzhen, China. And of course, it's a much bigger city than you know this area. But, um, but what they do is, it's actually quite interesting, is they, they completely separate out the pedestrian traffic from the car traffic. And so they, they would have like literally a bridge. They would have like oh. a pedestrian bridge, like on, on like a street like this, the pedestrian bridge, so you could just cross, right? And they would actually, they actually have like these, um, and the steps are interesting because on the center of the steps, they have these built-in ramps where you could walk your bike up. You could you know, walk on the stairs and then you don't have to lift your bike up. You could have these, um, you couldn't really ride up, not unless you're like really just incredible shape, but mm -hmm. you could you could just like, you know, uh, like um, uh, pull your bike up, right? Um, along along a ramp. So it's, it's not that hard. And so, um, so you could cross these intersections and, um, but I know that that costs money too, right? That's not, that's mm -hmm. not a cheap solution. And I don't know how, how many people would actually take that, but maybe for these large arterials, maybe that's something we should think about, right? Because if, you, if we want to, if you want to get, if we want to get people out of the cars, people have to feel safe, right? Yeah. There, there has to be, and also if, if you could do something like that, then it also makes the travel time faster, right? You don't have to, right. um, you don't have to wait for the light, right? Either mm -hmm. overpass or underpass, probably yeah. overpass is cheaper, right? But but that that's another solution. It's just expensive, right? How do you do it? But if we would do a lot of them, let's say we 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 try to do that, you know, throughout the city or area, right? Um, mm -hmm. Then it's probably not that expensive. We're just doing one; it gets crazy expensive. But yeah, yeah. yeah. But that that's what I've seen. Uh -oh. Like what Shenzhen did was that they just they just totally separated out the cars and uh, cars and and uh, bikers. Um, I mean, right. cars from the uh, bikes and and uh, pedestrians. And, and so, um, uh, and so, yeah, I mean, so like, as a result, a lot of people bike or walk because they, they don't feel, in fact, they can, you kind of have to even see like, that's so, it's so, so many people, like 20 million people, you just have to, right? Mm -hmm. But that's, that's another solution. That's just expensive, but another way is changing people's behavior. Yeah. But what yeah. I do sometimes myself, just to kind of, kind of, uh, because um, I've seen that too myself. I've never got hit, but I've, I've seen it. What, is, what I do is I ring my bell just as I cross, just to kind of get people's attention. But a lot of times they don't hear it. They're just, right. you know, they're not focused on it, right? They're, you know, right, right. just trying to get where they're trying to go, right? Um, and that's also really a very um, wide turn, right? So it's, it's easy for people pretty fast on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's going from a fast street to another fast street, right? So. Right. <laughs> so people just want to make a fast. Yeah, they turn. think they're going from a highway to a highway, and it's a it's an on ramp. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but Anna, what do you think about a pedestrian bridge? At that intersection? Yeah, but but see, it's different in China because they can do them kind of cheaply because you know in in the United States we have to have these ADA compliant ramps, so the the ramps have to be like you know these one percent or two percent grade, like really really sl slight. And, and what they do in China is they, uh, they, they're not ADA compliant whatsoever. They're just basically um, a staircase, right? And then they just, on, on the center of the staircase, they fill it in with concrete. So it's like a ramp. Okay. So it's, it's absolutely not ADA compliant. No one, nobody could probably pull themselves up with a wheelchair. It's not meant for that. It's just yeah, meant yeah. for you to be able to take your bike over, right? Um, like take, take it up with that and carry it up, right? Yeah. Yeah, there are a number of bridges around. You know, there's there's one across uh, Woodside Road. There's one at the Home Depot across 101. Yeah, uh, but those are really expensive bridges because, yeah. because, it, you know, like that bridge across 101. Well, that that's the East Palo Alto Bridge. So that wasn't that. I think that was like nine million or eight, eight or nine million, something oh. like, which is still expensive, right? Mm -hmm. But we built one in Palo Alto. I think it was like fifteen million dollars, right? Wow. Yeah. So the it's, other it's thing. Like, the other thing, uh, I guess, about this location, I mean, across 101, there's no way for a pedestrian to go, go across. But um, it, if, if one were at this intersection, a lot of the pedestrians would keep use, keep going across the crosswalk in spite of the danger because it'd be a lot longer across the bridge. Um, maybe some of the bicycles, too. Um, so in terms of, you know, the number of people use it, there's also that that part of it. Um, I mean, clearly, you want you want people who want who are seeking safety to have a, a safe option and then okay. people who don't care as much. I mean, there's not much you can do, but yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, probably the cheapest way would be to have some sort of red light camera or enforcement. Right. But it's, it's like, 
it's, it's like enforcement has to be kind of sort of continuous, otherwise it, it kind of fades, right? Um, so really can would probably be the best, but it's very controversial. A lot of people don't like it because, I mean, a lot of them perceive them, like actually like for the company that does this, I think they will install the equipment for free and then mm. they can take a rev share out of the citations. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, well, so people, I mean, it's, but it's really on the drivers because if it was one in a thousand drivers that does it, um, yeah. then there would be no, you know, no need to put a camera in for safety, you know, well, be a small need, but when so many are using it, they've brought it on themselves, yeah. you know? So if they change their behavior, then there's no need for the, for the camera. And I don't know, I mean, you're, you, you would be in the, I mean, the council would be in the hot seat on this, but I mean, you have to make a choice because I mean, the other option is wait until somebody gets seriously hurt and then put in the camera. Um, but that's, you don't want to do it that way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think fundamentally, in my mind, the best way is actually to separate out the, the cars and, and the, the cars and the bikes, right? I think fundamentally, that's, I think that's the best solution um, so that, you know, there's, you don't have, you don't have um, this kind of conflict. Yeah. Well, what are we going to do in the 2020s? <laughs> I mean, that's 2030s. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. Maybe well, I, I think I think I think it was a China style bridge. It, that could happen very quickly. In fact, these, these are these are not as elaborate as our, you know, as like a bridge over one on one where it's like you know, um, I mean, but um, yeah, I mean that's I think that just would not fly here, right? Something like that. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe maybe there's another more elegant thing. Maybe maybe it could be like a a bike tunnel, right? <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. that that could that could start from let's say i don't know over here somewhere right and then it, it lets out over here uh -huh. or something like that, yeah you know? i mean there's plenty of space i mean it's not yeah. like there's a whole lot of buildings that... yeah just something something like well maybe it starts out over here and just kind of goes through like this but that, that would be crazy expensive though mm -hmm. yeah but well, yeah well, something needs to happen or something you know you're gonna you're gonna start racking up casualties um yeah. And well, I mean, we, there's a there's a big push to try to get people to bike more, and you know, and there's electric bikes now, right? Electric bikes, what would be you know, kind of a tough ride for some people now becomes a very easy ride. So, um, so the technology is enabling more people to want to bike, but you know, people have to feel safe. You know, even if it's easy to yeah. bike, if they don't feel safe. They're just not going to do it. Right. And I don't think there's another way across, right? There's, there's no other easy way across El Camino. No. 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 Anywhere. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you, I mean, we want more people on the bikes, but if I had, if, if one of those two events I had been hit, I'd probably be off the bike. I mean, because I'm not a young guy. It's not going to be easy to recover and get back on the bike to start with. Yeah. And my wife's just going to say, you're not getting on that bike anymore. <laughs> I mean, if I'm if I'm in the hospital for, for a month, she's going to say no. Yeah. <laughs> and so you have one less one less cyclist, one yeah. more driver. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. which we don't want. We want more cyclists. Yeah, it's unfortunate, right? I mean, there, there's this uh, gas prices are like $7 or whatever, right? And, yeah. um, you know, we want to, for the environment, sick of the environment, uh, we're trying to cut down on the cars, but yeah, I mean, this, this, we have to have a solution to this. Otherwise, I, I think maybe a bike tunnel might be a good, a good thing, um, at least in this area, because you have enough, there's enough space around here that you could, you could do it. Um, it wouldn't be as as hard, I think, as a as a. Because I think with a tunnel, it's it's easy for people to get across, but um, but for uh, a bridge, you know, people, you know, to go over it could be hard sometimes. Because you also need to ramp up, right? Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, also uh, with the tunnel, some people get spooked by tunnels. I mean, the oh, tunnel that goes under the tracks at uh, is it Homer. Homer? Yeah, I mean that's pretty wide open, but um, yeah. there's another pedestrian tunnel. I'm not sure it's still there. That was um, near California Avenue. I mean, it, it, there's just some stairs, and it may not be there anymore. But I had a buddy who went under there, and he got mugged under there. He oh. he was going one way, and two guys are going. I mean, they must have seen him going down, and they were going yeah. the other way, and they kind of grabbed him under the tunnel. And yeah, um, well, maybe maybe a bridge is better than I don't know. Yeah, um, I don't know. I mean, there's there's pluses and minuses everything, but um yeah but anyways I, I think separation is good but the temporary the, you're right the 2020 solution is going to be enforcement mm -hmm. 
you know, um, so Greg, to make this thing a little bit more tangible, you know what you could do that would be really helpful and we could help promote it as well, would be to start a change.org. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but you could start like an online petition to try to get a red light camera here, right? And try to get more people to sign up for it, right? To say, yes, we want something like this. Um, but I, I just know that crossing El Camino in general has been somewhat dangerous, not just here, but like, like in various parts, I've, I've, I think like a, a lot of people have, have been hit or killed or almost hit crossing El Camino. And in, in some ways, there shouldn't, we shouldn't have to cross El Camino. Or should, there should be a better way. Yeah. So you're, you're suggesting to change.org to get a camera? Yeah, I mean, I mean, or, or, or if you think that's the solution, or you know, maybe you could, you could shoot for the 2030 station, go for a bridge or something, right? But um, the camera is probably the easier, easier way to make happen, right? That's not, that's not hard to get set up. It's just the political pushback, right? Um, so, so I, I think we're kind of talking about political cover here a little bit. I mean, change cover, change.org, if there's a lot of um, people who sign up, I, um, I'm not optimistic that it's going to be a groundswell. I mean, if there are 10 people, then yeah, I haven't actually, I haven't actually done anything like that before, but, um, if there were a video showing what's actually happening, um, I mean, do you think that would get the council to, uh, put a camera in? You know, so so what's interesting here is this is right on the border of Palo Alto and Menlo Park, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's like I'm not entirely sure where the where the line goes because it, it uh, goes it's way the, back. Uh, it's back to, okay, so this is Palo Alto's land then. Okay, it's so way it's, back here. Okay. okay. Uh, because it's the okay. creek. Well, yeah, actually, creek. yeah. Uh, I'm not. I, I don't actually see the creek, but I think what? the creek is past this hotel. Okay. Um. And I know that I know on this side, on this side. Okay. Uh, okay. So it's squarely no, in Palo Alto. The tree, the Palo Alto tree is way down there. So okay. okay. So that, that makes it easy for us. So yeah. um, it is also a interstate, right? So we, you know, like whenever there's there's, there's the state and then the city, there's always this kind of jurisdictional confusion. But um, but uh, um, like you know, you know, like El Camino. I'm not sure where you are in Nola Park, but where I am in Palo Alto, El Camino is a total wreck. I mean, it's just all broken up, and it's just, mm. yeah. But yeah. Um, uh, we so we've never done red light, red light cameras in our city. So in Nola Park, it's probably a little bit easier because you guys have them already. But in our city, we never had them. So that that's another kind of um, that's kind of like another thing that's tough, right? Well, so the question is, are you going to enforce the red light or not? Well, the red light cameras are automatic, right? The red light cameras. Yeah, yeah. They, they so, have, so the so I, I guess reframing this, there's a problem. Yeah. And are you going to enforce it or not? Well, so is yeah, is Palo also going to enforce it or not? Well, if there's a, if the, if, the, if a police officer is there, he would certainly enforce it, right? But what I'm saying that is for how long? Well, yeah, yeah. So I, if 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 people are just doing it routinely, you're not enforcing it. Yeah. Of if course. you're enforcing it, then it's going to be rare. Yeah. So right now it's not rare. So you're not in I mean, it's not being enforced. So yeah, maybe if a police officer happened to be there, but um, enforcing it means that you're, well, okay. I guess enforcing it can mean multiple things, but you could enforce it um, lightly or enforce where nothing changes, or you can enforce it to the point where people follow the rules, yeah. you know, well, so 99% here, you know, of the people follow the rules. Yeah. Here's the idea is, um, is maybe you set up the red light camera and on the first time you, you, you blow past this red light, you just get a warning, right? But mm -hmm. you blow past it twice, maybe you get a ticket, yeah. right? So the company, I don't know how the company feels about that, but. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they, that they want, of course, as many tickets as possible, right? Yeah, I like that idea. So once per, once per license plate, you get a free, a freebie. Yeah. With, a, with a, a, a note that if you do it again, I like that idea. Yeah. Well, they what they do actually they take a video, so they actually you can actually see yourself <laughs> yeah. going through there, and so you get a little video, and you mm -hmm. can see that you're and you can see the, the the light too, right? So you can see yourself blow right. past that light, right? Right. And and so it's really hard to um, contest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think that would you think that would fly the uh, warning? 
You know, I, I, I've never tested the temperature for red light cameras in Palo Alto, so I don't know, actually. Um, I'm not sure. Um, but it is a solution, right? It is a solution to this problem. And it's something that if you go down El Camino towards Miller Park, you guys have a bunch of them, right, on El Camino. Yeah, I know they were. I'm not sure if they're still installed or not. I haven't actually, I don't remember seeing the flashes because um, oh. they may be gone now. But they were definitely there. Yeah, I remember, I mean, uh, maybe four years ago, I definitely remember them, you know, being there. I, and I, I just haven't checked recently. Yeah, I think they're know. gone, but yeah. Um. Okay, well, anyways, uh, great thing for um, bringing this to my attention. Um, if you do, if you do set up a change org, we'll post it in this video and you know, we could try to help promote it as well. Um, can I, we, we have a bike pedestrian plan, master plan for the city. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'll definitely bring this up and, and that kind of falls that this would fall into this and into, um, into that program. And then, um, I have a letter to the aide who's actually focused on biking. So, uh, Josh, and I'll have him keep get in touch with you. So I'll have Inez connect right. him with okay. you and we'll try to see if we can carry this forward. Do you think we can start with maybe just a camera to monitor to see the level of of compliance? You know, so I, I don't control staff directly. Um, okay. So if this is already in the biking plan, then yes. Okay. But if it's not, then um, then um, you know changing course is also a little bit tougher. But um, so that's why you also have to kind of uh, rally support because yeah. things are never so yeah. like yeah you can't. It's hard to do things on demand. It's, okay. it's like a, it's like a, it's like a big ship. It kind of wants to go in this direction it's going. <laughs> okay. even, right. even it's not quite right. Okay. No. Okay, but it is. Okay, um, yeah, I'll look forward to hearing from Josh. And, yeah, so uh, it is connect uh, Josh with uh, Greg so that he can help follow up. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, uh, uh, Greg, I really appreciate your time. I know that sure. uh, the that your job is tremendously demanding. Very little, um, congrat, you know, uh, appreciation. A lot of um, complaining, but I I greatly appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, no problem, no problem. But, but thank you for letting me know. I'm a, I'm a big biker myself, so I, I think this is important. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, have Enjoy a good day. All right. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, bye. All right. Bye.